Yo, what's going on guys? It's Steve. So last night, boy oh boy was last night a classic. So we had Stephen Curry versus Kyrie Irving. Now I made a video saying I was wrong about Kyrie Irving, you know, the day prior. And, you know, he just proved me wrong again and just showed how good he is, you know, as the number one option on his team, as the leader of his team. Now, before we even get on, we have to talk about something very important. My main man, Carmelo Anthony. Reach 25,000 career points. Now, when we when we when we talk about Carmelo Anthony reaching 25,000 points, he did it against a team that should have drafted him second. So it was like a big middle finger to Detroit, saying, "This is what you get for not drafting me." Because if you would have drafted me, we would have had like three rings together. But I'll sit here and I'll tell you this right now. Carmelo Anthony and the Oklahoma City Thunder, they're doing their thing. Paul George definitely deserves to be an All Star. Russell Westbrook had another triple double. Now let me sit here and tell you this. Carmelo Anthony will reach 30,000 points. But on a serious note, which that was serious, but on the topic of this video, Stephen Curry, he pretty much said last night that I'm still the best point guard in the NBA. And no one even comes close to me because what I saw last night was reminiscent of what I saw in the 2015-16 NBA season. Now, this is no surprise for me because I, have, I, I, I knew Stephen Curry was still dominant. All right, there, there's some people now that think, you know, he's not even top five anymore. They think Kawhi and James Harden took the ranks and, you know, all of this other stuff. But I'll say, and I'll tell you this right now. Kawhi is an absolute monster. James Harden is an absolute monster. Russell Westbrook is an absolute monster. But the thing about Kawhi Leonard is that, one, he's not healthy right now. So he couldn't elevate himself like he did in the 2016-17. Because in 2015-16, I had him like a Paul George player. Oh, you know, a borderline all-star. And now I have Paul George like, okay, he's pretty much a solidified all-star. And I have Kawhi Leonard as, yeah, Kawhi Leonard last year became like the fourth best player in the world. Now, James Harden is great. Uh, Russell Westbrook is great. But they're too inconsistent for me. And last night, what Stephen Curry did... Now, do we have to go through the box score? First, let's talk about Kyrie Irving. In 36 minutes, Kyrie had 37 points, 2 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 steal. He shot 13 of 18 from the field for 72%, which is really freaking good, you know? And then when you look at Stephen Curry, in 36 minutes, he had 49 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals, and he shot 67% from the field and 61% from the 3. This guy, Stephen Curry, not only... Here's the thing that blows my mind about Stephen Curry... The thing that blows my mind, and I'm not even a Steph Curry fan. You, you got to watch my channel. I'm a Carmelo Anthony fan to the day I die. When you, in crunch time, last night in crunch time, he proved that he's still one of the clutchest players in the league. But you have to understand how hard it is to be clutch while you're being while you're a shooter. It's different when you drive to the basket. You, you know, you got, it, it's all right if you miss because you might get fouled, and then you have to go to the free throw line. But when you're a shooter and you get the rebound. And there's like 40 seconds left on the clock. It's tie game. And you have so much confidence that you take four dribbles to the top of the key from the other side of the court and just pull it in three people's face and make it. That's something really special about you. Because in crunch time, you get a, everyone, no matter who you are, they get a little jittery. They shake a little. And if you shake a little while you shoot the basketball... That ball is gonna misalign itself by a little, by a little, like a centimeter, by like a little degree, you know, and then the shot is, you're gonna miss the shot. But Stephen Curry, what I saw last night, he hit that clutch three from the top of the key, give them a three point lead. Then he hit that layup coming off the screen, give them a five point lead. And that's when he stood and looked at the crowd like, this is what I do. You know, this is what I do. You guys forgot? You know, do we have to? I mean, I don't understand how anyone can say Stephen Curry isn't the third best player in the world anymore at this point because he clearly is there's a reason why Kevin Durant went to him now I'll agree with most people when they said he was overrated back in 2015-16 when they went 73-9 he's overrated in the fact that people said he was better than LeBron and Kevin Durant which is not true you know LeBron and KD they're better but for reasons that Stephen Curry has no control over. And it's just purely their small forwards and their height. You know, when you're a wing player, you can just simply do more. You can be more adaptive. You can, you know, play defense in more positions. You can see the court better. You can rebound better, play defense easier. It's just when you're 6'8", six, 6'9", six, like these two players, really Kevin Durant is 7 foot. But when you're like these two players, LeBron and KD at that size, you know, playing that position, you just do more on the court. So you have the advantage of being the better player. 
So that's out of Stephen Curry's, you know, that, that that's not his. He can't control him. It's not like he, when he's a baby, he selected, oh, I only want to be six foot three inches. No, he obviously probably would have picked six. Eh, he probably would have said, you know, I'm happy with what God made me because he's really religious. But that's besides the point. Last night was a statement to the NBA. And Stephen Curry said it in the press conference. Now, obviously, he had to relay it as a team statement. He was like, look, we're still the best team in the league. We're still the most dangerous team in the league. Uh, tonight's game was like a playoff game. If this is what we're to expect, in, you know, again, in May and June, you know, we're ready and we're going to do our thing. And teams should be weary because we're dominating. That's pretty much what he said. But non-verbally what he said was, I'm the third best player in the world. I'm still the best point guard in the NBA. No matter what anyone says, I'm still the best. There's nothing you can do about it, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. I don't. You can throw Kyrie at me. You can throw Russell Westbrook. You can throw James Harden, Chris Paul, John Wall, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kemba Walker. You can throw any point guard that you think is good in this league. Damian Lillard, Dame Dollar. You can throw anyone at me, and I will obliterate them, annihilate them, pulverize them, just purely, how should I say, make them disintegrate into nothing compared to me because Kyrie had a dominant performance. You look at Kyrie, if you just watch Kyrie's highlights without paying attention to the, to the score on the bottom, you would think the Boston Celtics won the game because they just had a dominant, you know, Kyrie was dominating. Right, and the Celtics look—they were looking good, and Golden State only won by four points. You know, so if you just look at the box score and only look at the highlights without looking at the score, you know, if you just look at—excuse me—if you still just look at Kyrie's stat line without looking at the the game score, but just look at the highlights and the stat line without looking at the game score, you would think Boston won. Kyrie dominated, but then you go over and you actually look at it and you see what Stephen Curry did. He made Kyrie's performance look like. A walk in the park. He made Kyrie's performance look like a breeze. Look like it was just a regular performance. And that's what Stephen Curry does. You know? But So, honestly, again, I have to say this because there's going to be people, people that watch me all the time but still think I'm a Stephen Curry fan. Which I kind of am now. Like, it's not that I don't, I, I want him, I want everyone to succeed. You know what I'm saying? It's not that I hate Stephen Curry. It's not like, oh, I don't want him to win or anything. It's just like, how could you not like the dude with what he's doing? You know, how could you not appreciate what he's doing in the NBA at this point in time? You know, it's like, there's no way anyone can not appreciate what he's doing. And let me tell you something, man. Last night was... Last night was ridiculous. Uh, I, I mean, god damn, man. That was one of the best games of the season so far. I mean, they were really going back and forth. At a point in time in the fourth quarter, I don't know, like a couple minutes left in the fourth quarter, Steph missed the three. Kyrie came right in Steph's face and popped it. Popped the three right in his face. And Steph was like, damn, Kyrie. You know, Steph was like, damn, Kyrie. I was like, damn. Yeah, and then Steph was like, all right, you want to do this? Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. And then crunch time came and Steph took over. You know, so last night was a pretty fun night in the NBA. My main man, Carmelo Anthony, my favorite player of all time, reached a 25,000-point milestone. Now, I personally predict he will reach 30,000 points by the end of his career, which will lead him into a territory with, what, only 10 players, I think it is. that You know, nine players now, but it'll be 10 when he joins it. Um, so I'm very excited to see Carmelo Anthony do that because, let's be real, he's mellow. Stay mellow, my friend. Now, you just need to win a chip, man, and you're solidified a top 25 player of all time, without a doubt. I was there, and I'll tell you this right now, and you'll be along with your, your, your friends, you know, Dwayne Wade and LeBron James and the top 25 players ever. I was there, I'll tell you this right now. I did not watch the Orlando versus Indiana game. I did not watch the Washington versus Atlanta game. I most certainly did not watch Charlotte versus Miami. I'm a Nets fan. I'm really a Knicks fan, but I grew up watching the Knicks and the Nets, so I like the Nets as well. But Knicks over everything. It's Knicks over everything. My Nets lost, unsurprisingly. 
I tell you, I go to Nets games all the time because my stepdad has season tickets, and it's like we're at a, it's like we're on a road game every game, no matter who comes, even if it's a bum team like the Bobcats. I know the Bobcats don't exist, but I'm just making an example, like a bum team like the Hornets or the Hawks or the Pacers or or the Heat. It's a road game for us, which is very sad. I did not watch Dallas versus Denver. It's been you, man, Steve. Stephen Curry pretty much last night said that he's still the third best player in the world, but not only that, that he's the best point guard in the NBA. It's been you, man, Steve. I'm out. Peace.